You've got your um, recording voice on. Do I? Mm. What is it? Oh, I look worse. I look worse. That's like just my normal voice. No, it's not. That's your normal voice. My normal voice is whiny and annoying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, let's get on with the shit. Okay. <laughs> Hello. This is... <laughs> Why am I like this? I don't know. <laughs> it's like... Hello. <coughs> this is, is my sister. She is a year younger than me. And we are very, very different. And I am Complete autistic. Opposite. And she is not autistic, as far as we know. Yes, <laughs> I was going to say. We are going to go through pretty much the same questions I asked my mum in that other video and get my sister's perspective on things. Question number one. Oh dear. Dun, dun. <laughs> that was meant to be mastermind, but it didn't really sound like it oh, in the yeah. end. <laughs> what are the most obvious signs of my autism to you, do you think? Everything. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> okay, next question. For me, it's just your need to know something in advance so you can plan in your own brain for it. Mm -hmm. So you're not spontaneous, like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to so-and-so's, you need a, at least a day to wrap your head around that plan. Yeah. I'm not very good at spontaneity, but I can sort of do it. You're quite spontaneous, though. Uh, I have to write everything in my calendar and it's all like super color-coded and you do that as well. I think it's because we're both visual people, though. Definitely. And we're both like quite creative and like we're into color. Question number two. What's the best part about having an autistic sister? You're very loving and you're very loyal Yay. and you remember strange things like what? They're very like random memories and you'll be like do you remember that and i'm like oh my god i do yeah. like, but you have that as well like you remember really vivid stuff from when you were like three it's yeah. not as like particular as mine yeah you have like specific specific yeah no you're very loving and very loyal yeah. and i suppose predictable <laughs> i predict you'd have meltdown over certain things and you were like cruise through and i'm like Okay then, that's good. Mm. Thank you. You're welcome. Question number three. What is the most frustrating part of my autism? You're so fucking stubborn. And I am also <laughs> stubborn as hell. I didn't think I was that stubborn. No, when you have to get like the last word of an argument or something and it just gets worse oh, yeah. and worse and we're there. Like... We got strong personalities, I think. And where they're kind of similar <laughs> What's is that? that the right thing? It's a Spider Man. What's that? <laughs> what is that? What is that? What did you do? I did that. Oh, sick. <laughs> um, um, so I'm very stubborn. You're not very spontaneous. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Everything has to be planned. Yeah. We just have different, like, I like to sing songs and all that, like, mm. loud music. I can have I a lot of buzz going on around me and still yeah. function. You can't have no. any buzz mm -mm. around you. It's not really relevant to the questions, but I feel like I'm not as emotional as you. Yeah, you kind of get on with life. You're I kind like... of internalise it and I don't really externalise it. Whereas you're like, Wah! yeah, and I'm just like, oh, that's sad. I wonder if that... Yeah. <laughs> like, we went to Grandad's funeral and I was I like... I cried that like, I was the whole like, time. This is a normal day. Yeah. And then I got there. <laughs> Like so calm, and then we sat down in the pew, and the song started, and she just went. Yeah! <laughs> it's the music. And it got to her, and but there. everyone else is just kind of like looking, like it's gone really quiet, and he was going. <laughs> <laughs> going on it like doesn't hit me because like i feel like i'm in fantasy world all yeah the time. so then when it like reality reality hits i'm like holy oh, crap yeah. okay question number four this is quite interesting were you ever scared or worried for me growing up uh for example at school and stuff and if so why slash when i have an opposite memory <laughs> <laughs> i remember when you um when you went into the hospital for meningitis i must have been about five yeah i think and i remember Mum and dad took me out of the hospital and we walked down the road and I had both their hands and I remember being like, <laughs> <laughs> like I, I have, have both the parents. <laughs> yeah, so I have an opposite memory of being oh. like completely disregarded for the fact you're in hospital <laughs> and I just like the fact I have both parents. When you're that young, you're kind of like, hospital with fixes everything. Yeah, so yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. And I don't think I really understood why you were in the hospital. No. I just kind of knew you weren't yeah. at home. On the other way, I, yeah, like I remember like being at... Um, like secondary school, obviously that's like absolutely terrifying to go into. I remember being like, yeah. is she gonna be okay? Because oh, nice. I think obviously I was like a year behind. I was like, mm. I'm anxious as hell. So yeah. like, how is she dealing with that? And like, I'd come home and like have like crying fits about yeah, because like, people are stuff. dicks in year seven, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, like, all throughout whole, school, yeah. but like year seven is like there's a lot of lot of shit going because i feel like that was such a big like part of my like time there's like feeling upset and like anxious and stuff mm. and i'd like offload to mum a lot 
Yeah. But I feel like you just didn't want to listen to that, so you'd kind of like... I'd just go off and yeah. do my own thing. But that's not because I didn't care for you. No, no It was no. just like the way I dealt with it. Yeah. yeah, I think you were a bit scared for me when I started getting to like dating a little bit and stuff. Yeah. Because you were quite protective over me. Definitely, but no offence, you were like super naive. And like... I still you am. don't know your boundaries like you know mm. them much better now but you didn't know them back then obviously i was like worried about like that sort of yeah. thing but so that's like and i stepped in once i'll, I'll suck a punch them i'll kick them in the nuts question five which strategies do you think help the most with i should just say like anxiety but like autism as well. i don't know if that's a strategy or not but like naming the blah and giving it like yeah. a, a t- not tangible, but like a, like a separate bit. Like, yeah, like a you like dad saying like, oh, the blah. That's the blah talking. Mm, it's not me. Yeah, that's that's I found mm. more dealing with what you mm. like growing up with you. Yeah. I felt like that was good because there was a separation between you. Yeah. And your personality, and then yeah. your anxieties like expressing mm. themselves. It's all the emotional parts getting tangled up. Yeah. And then if you name it, it's like, oh wait, this is naturally You're like, me. This is something yeah, else. Exactly. This isn't mm. how I'm feeling. Like this isn't who I am. This is just a strange sort of entanglement mm. of emotions that I can't quite figure out how to portray. I saw you. Question number six. <laughs> Do you I'm have back in the stallion? <laughs> Question number six. Do you have any advice for people who have siblings with autism? Okay, so addressing the sibling, not the person, the individual with autism. Um, just learn their boundaries. Mm-hmm. I'd say be there to stick, stick up for them if they need yeah. it in out like in situations. If you don't get on with them, that's fine because <laughs> yeah. you're very different people. Yeah. Um, but you still love them. You might get a little bit less attention, but <laughs> it's true actually. From no, not just that from like, the autism perspective, because you're right. I do have to have a lot of support, like yeah. emo- emotionally. The common sense. You need yeah. to ask questions. Yeah, about. and I need to ask mom and dad a lot more stuff. Mm. Whereas you kind of like already kind of guessed it or yeah. knew it. Yeah, naturally the way you live, you need mm. you need aids in certain things, mm. and I don't. Yeah, I don't need to be told like <laughs> how to do certain like it's cooking. How you tie your laces? Yeah, like little things Ooh. like that. So it's like so weird because I'm so logical in some ways, and like I have really good ideas for like saving money yeah. or like stuff that's really complicated, and then other stuff where it's like, oh, yeah. I really don't know how to turn the oven on. Autistic people <laughs> yeah. have a high level of t- academic or yeah. you know like mechanical brain, mm-hmm. but the common sense is quite low. Yeah. But then I've got absolutely no academic sort of. Yeah. But then I'm. I've got, I can do what I can do without like, you know, asking a million questions. When I was first doing my job, I asked literally like questions, I think like probably every like 10 minutes and I have no idea how they didn't hate me. (laughs) I was just like, what is this? Why do I do this? I don't get this. Question seven, what's the most memorable lesson I've taught you? Senpai. What have you taught me? Patience. (laughs) (laughs) To be um, accommodating to other people's needs. Mm-hmm. to realise that people need very different things in their life and how mm. the worlds and the environments that surround them. And I think it's given you just a broader perspective on autism, I think. Definitely. Because I know you know people in your life that have aut- autistic siblings or yeah. something and like you can relate to them a lot. and like Definitely. And I them. think it gives me a wider understanding of people. I, I definitely have that understanding of the humour or the way that mm. they... That, it's said. Do you mm. know what I mean? It's well, a other very people, specific other people, kind of humour. Yeah, and other people are like, oh, I don't get that. I'm like, I get that. I think this is a bit of a tangent, but I feel like a lot of autistic people are online a lot, so they get like all, yeah. the, all the inside jokes and stuff, and that helps us feel relevant yeah. because we get all of the jokes. Because yeah. like, it's a safe space for like autistic people to be online. Express themselves And express well, themselves. Yeah. And like, it helps absorb the social landscape quicker. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, question number eight. Do you think I have a savon skill? I.e. Um, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you know, you know how some people are like, they can see a picture of a city and then they like draw the city from memory. and like. Oh, like, right. So I, and like, that's a very big stereotype with autism is like, yeah. all the films are like, he knows how to do math. Oh, it's like Rain Man. Ow, my knee. <laughs> that, <laughs> that annoys me. That's so annoying when you do that. What? Ow. It's like I am in pain. Yeah, it's, this is the most obvious way of it's saying. It's like you're thinking to yourself, "This is how I should react to that." <laughs> Annoying me. Yeah, that is my sub <laughs> skill. <laughs> I think we both know how to push each other's buttons, like just. Oh, she. <laughs> like I don't know if that's just a sibling thing. It's also because we're so different as well. Yeah, like. we just we couldn't be further away from each other. Yeah. Like, well, I think we could, but like it's a quite a big space of yeah. personality between us. I mean, you're incredibly clever in lots and lots Thank of you. ways, 
but I don't you, I don't think you have a savant skill or whatever that means. The only thing I can think of is like reading because mm. I can't like read like 100 pages an hour or something. But like, I know, I guess that's not really a savant skill. But when I'm focused, I can be like super focused. You're zoned into it. But it's kind of rare because of my ADHD. But when it does mm. happen, it's like... Psh- You're just genuinely like, wow, smart. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Debunked. Question number nine. <laughs> Question number nine. What are my special interests? Uh, are we talking about like your phases of what you like? You have like natural arcs of what you're interested in at the time, which I think quite a lot of people yeah, have. Yeah, that's actually very true. And like, I feel like with autism as well, it's quite an intense like yeah. for something. Although like I love The Sims 2 and stuff. I don't play it like every single day. Yeah, and, but and you I'm, did at one yeah. point in your life. Do you know what I mean? So like you had The Sims 2 arc and then you had the exercise arc and, yeah. and then you had like the YouTube Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, I do have a few, but they're not like special interests in the more stereotypical. Like, yeah, definitely. I could spend my entire day doing this and not do yeah. anything else. Like, I don't really have that level of like concentration. In, yeah, I can. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I definitely have things I like. Like, I like the feel and texture of books, and I like the yeah. Sims. And I like astrology. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, and I like that's... Dan and Phil. But yeah, like, exactly, exactly. But like, I wouldn't like say it was a problem. No, kind of. they hit their peak of like a lot of your time is invested in them mm. but I think from that point they, they sort of they're still there but they sort yeah. of just swoop down a little bit. I feel like as well it's important to say that like there is a stereotype that it's always like trains or like birds or whatever there are other versions of special interest yeah exactly like, girly things aren't seen as like yeah as a traditional autistic thing autistic yeah. specialised yeah. like the amazing family household dad's cutting one brick mum said you are so popular. You get like 100 messages. I just get like, you have not done Duolingo. <laughs> question 10. Last question. Do you think there are any hidden pressures on girls with autism? And if so, what are these? I.e. do we have to mask us? symptoms? Yeah, I think you have to mask heavier, much heavier mm. than boys. Particularly at school, I had to mask a lot to, like to try and fit in. Mm. It was quite extreme for me because like naturally I'm like this. Like I barely wear makeup at all yeah. and I'm quite quirky. And like now I think it's just because I'm older. But I embrace it and I'm like, I'm just going to be myself. Like I don't care. Yeah. But And people don't really mind. But I think when you're like younger, you definitely have like... Yeah. I, think. I know like a girl on TikTok and she expresses her, uh, her mm. cause she's autistic I think you might have shared her she's blonde she's like really pretty yeah. she gets so many comments like prove you're autistic I know and it's like but people don't believe you yeah, like, unless, you don't look autistic what does fit, that even mean yeah <laughs> like unless you fit into the I like trains stereotype or, and you miss certain social cues do you know mm. what I mean people will be like oh like you yeah. obviously are. It's think, like, how do you prove that like, your brain's wired differently? Like, yeah. how is that possible? Exactly. And I think girls are conditioned to socialise. Yeah. Um, just from an early age, it's like, oh, she's such a talker or like whatever. Yeah. And she's like, chatty. Yeah. And we kind of take that on as like, oh, we have to be like this then. Mm. And I think that's why a lot of them get missed in diagnosis because it's like, oh, they're talking a lot. They can't be like an awkward autistic yeah. person. I yeah. think there are hidden pressures. But then I think there's hidden pressures in girls anyway. I just think with autism, it's like, I think there's a lot more, yeah, there's a lot more trying to fit in. All right. Thank you, Bath. Hi. We had a good hi. <laughs> um, do you want any shout outs or anything for your channels? No. She don't have no YouTube channel, but she does make furniture. I do. And it actually featured in one of my videos. Um, and I did actually link it in the description. Oh, you cutie. Thank, Thank you. you. So if you're interested in buying a stool, <laughs> <laughs> that rare subset of people thanks for watching as usual please give it a like and a subscribe and all that stuff please, please don't come for me don't come for bath she's a lovely person and i stupid no she's not stupid I don't be so silly don't be so stupid <laughs> thanks for joining thank me. you for having me Wee. here's a video here that you might want to see you might want to see it you might want to see it you might not depends it's like we're voguing. Thanks for watching <laughs> and yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye bye.